Wow. Um, I've given um, thousands of talks in my time and seminars. Nothing quite like this. Well, today I'm going to talk about the topic of sea level rising. Sea level rise, even in the smallest amount, can cause devastating effects. The encroachment of seawater as sea level rises can cause destructive erosion. It can contaminate our aquifers and our agricultural soils. It can flood coastal wetlands, removing um, wildlife habitats for very valuable birds, fish, plants, and other animals. Sea level rise can increase the impact of a storm surge, making a hurricane storm surge more powerful, making it higher, flooding a greater area of land. The iconic image that you see in front of you is the after effects of Hurricane Sandy. The storm surge removed a coastal pier, plunging this roller coaster into the water at seaside heights. Hundreds of millions of people live along the coastline. With sea level rise, they're going to have to abandon their homes. They're going to have to relocate. Low-lying coastal lands are going to be submerged. Islands may be lost. So the question of whether sea level is rising is of paramount concern to society. But it is not a simple question to answer. If we are to reliably predict what sea level is going to do in the future, not only do we have to understand how sea level has changed in the present, we need to know what happened in the past, and we need to know what processes are responsible for them. So over the next 15 or so minutes, I'm going to take you on a bit of a whirlwind tour through this maze. So first of all, this slide here shows the observational record of what sea level has been doing over the last 150 years. And on the, um, right hand, on the left hand side, we have our projections into the future. Now in the red, we have the data from the tide gauges. Now tide gauges are relatively simple oceanographic um, pieces of apparatus. Um, they measure the high and low tides uh, uh, within the ports of our world. But if you put them all together, they tell you what the average sea level has been doing over the 20th century. And sea levels have been rising at around eight, uh, around eight inches per century, around two millimeters per year, or a grand total of around 20 centimeters. In the darker shade, or the insert, we have satellite-based measurements. Satellites that circumnavigate our Earth basically record the sea surface heights. And they have shown, since records began in the early 1990s, that sea levels are now rising at rates of around three millimeters per year. So the next question is, is what are the processes that are responsible for these changes in the present and will be responsible for the predictions for the future? Well, first of all, we have our oceans. Now, when um, our oceans warm up, they expand. They occupy a greater volume. Now, each individual water molecule will only expand by the tiniest of fractions. But when you add up the complete depths of our oceans, this makes a substantial contribution to the sea levels over the last 150 years. This contribution is around 50% of the 20th century sea level rise. The next process concerns mass, the change of water in the form of ice into a liquid. Now, mountain glaciers in the summer months, they melt because of the increase in temperature. But in the winter months, they are replaced, they are balanced traditionally by snowfall. But with global warming, the increase in temperature has caused increased melting, and there's a decrease in snowfall. And this has caused sea level to rise. During the 20th century, they've contributed about a third to the rate of sea level rise. But in the 21st century, this will be much smaller because this type of ice isn't in great volumes on our planet. In contrast, we have our ice sheets. Just like our mountain glaciers, these are showing signs of melting. Scientists believe that meltwater on the surface 
and warm seawater beneath are seeping into the ice sheets of Greenland and Western Antarctica, causing, lubricating these ice sheets, causing the ice sheets to move at accelerating paces from land to sea. And these ice sheets are huge. The Greenland ice sheet covers over 500 square miles. It has enough water within it to raise sea levels by over seven meters. Antarctica is much, much bigger. Antarctica has within it over five million square miles of ice. It contains enough water to raise sea levels by over 60 meters. And we have some very worrying trends. In the 20th century, our ice sheets contributed about 25% to the sea level rise. In the 21st century, it's contributing 40%. There are some worrying facts if you go back to the geological record. If you take yourselves back 120,000 years ago to the last time the Earth had a warm climate, temperatures were around 2 to 3 degrees C warmer than they are today, exactly what we're predicting for the 21st century. In that time period, Greenland and Western Antarctic, they collapsed. Sea levels around our planet rose by 5 to 10 meters, 15 to 30 feet. The next process, and a process that causes a regional variability in the rate of sea level change, is what is the land doing? So certain places on the Earth, the land will uplift. Certain places on the Earth, the land will sink. And this is related to geological forces. The same geological forces that cause earthquakes, that explode volcanoes, that build mountain chains. We also contribute to land level sinking by removing oil, by removing gas, by removing groundwater. So there are certain places on the earth where the land uplifts and that minimizes, perhaps even reverses the effect of sea level rise. But there are other places where the land level sinks. These are called hot spots of sea level rise. And the US Atlantic coast is one of those. The US Atlantic coast is sinking as a result of geological forces related to an extinct ice sheet. Where you are sat today is sinking at around two millimeters per year. So this land around here is, has sunk around um, eight inches during the last 100 years. And it is this reason why if you look at the tie gauges from the Jersey Shore, that they are recording rates of rise of four millimeters per year. Remember the global average is somewhere between two to three millimeters per year. So the next question to ask is, are the rates of sea level rise and the processes that we see in the observational period of the last 100, 150 years, are they anomalous? Are they the odd one out? And the only way to answer that is to go back through time. So the graphic that you see behind you is the change in sea level for coastal New Jersey over the last 10,000 years. And this is in a period known as the Holocene. The Holocene is a warm episode in the Earth's climate. Temperatures warmed, ice sheets melted, oceans expanded. And when you combine that with land level sinking, you get this record that at 10,000 years ago, sea levels were some 25 meters or 75 feet below their present day levels. Then with the rising temperatures, our ice sheets melted and our sea level rose. Sea levels rose between around 10,000 and 6,000 at around four to five millimeters per year, just slightly higher than they are today. So how did these sea level rise over the last 10,000 years, how did that affect the coastline? So what I'm going to show you now is a series of maps that we've produced that show how the coastline has changed through time. I'm going to show you 1,000-year intervals from 10,000 years to present. To orientate you on these maps, the black shows the present-day shoreline. So you should be able to see Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, the Jersey Shore, Long Island, and Cape Cod. At 10,000 years ago, the coastline on this map and all others is the boundary between the green and the turquoise. The shades from greens to yellows to orange and reds are elevations in meters above sea level. 
the increasing shades of blue are depths below sea level. So at 10,000 years, because sea levels are 25 meters below present, our shoreline is 100 miles away from it where it is today. Then what happens when sea level rises? So by 9,000 years, we have the sea level rising, it causes flooding, it causes devastating erosion, and the shoreline retreats. We've created an island off Cape Cod. 8,000 years ago, further retreat of our coastlines. Our coastlines are retreating under these rates of rise by 10 to 20 miles. 7,000 years ago, further retreat. But by 6,000 years ago, our coastlines look much like they do today. And why is that? Well, that's because our climate has stabilized, therefore our sea levels have stabilized. And therefore, along the US Atlantic coast and elsewhere along the world, we've been able to form barriers, the coastal barriers that we spend our holidays on. We're able to form the coastal wetlands, the salt marshes, the freshwater marshes. These are areas where we have our fisheries, which in the early years provided a sustainable harvest for our early civilizations. And we won through to present. So the next thing to do is to try and put this all together. Let's put together the sea levels of the past, the sea levels of the present, and compare them with the sea levels of the future. You get this very provocative graph that looks like a hockey stick. The sea levels of the past, we collected high resolution data from sedimentary cores, and what we showed that there was a very close relationship between the temperatures of our planet and sea level. In the first millennia, temperatures didn't change and sea levels didn't change. But at around 1000 AD, 1000 years ago, temperatures started to warm up because we entered a climate episode known as the medieval warm period. What did sea levels do? They slightly rose. Then at around 1500 AD, 500 years ago, our climate changed again. It went into a cooling period known as the Little Ice Age. What did sea level do? It slightly fell. And then at the latter part of the 19th century, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, when our temperatures start to pick up, our sea levels pick up. And in our observational record, we have rates of two millimeters per year. They are faster than any rate of sea level rise over the past 2,000 years. But they are dwarfed by the projections of what will happen in the future. Now, there are many projections, many studies of what ha will happen to sea level. I decided to highlight the National Climate Assessment of 2013. Why? Because this is a probabilistic assessment. Um, it synthesizes all previous data. And what are they saying about the coming centuries? Well, they're saying that there's a 90% chance, 9 in 10, that sea levels by 2100 will be at least 20 centimetres higher than they are today, at least 8 inches, and they'll be less than 2 metres or 6.6 .6 feet. So where are these rates driven from? Well, the 8 inches is just a continuation of the observational record that I have already discussed. The intermediate low at around half a metre is just the projection of how the oceans are going to expand. The intermediate high at 1.2 meters or 3.9 feet is how the oceans are going to expand together with a moderate melting of our ice sheets. And the 6.6 .6 feet is how our oceans are going to expand with an acceleration in the melting of Greenland and Antarctica. Now these measurements are all global averages. You have to add or subtract what the land is going to do, ocean dynamics, atmospheric circulation. Now, I previously just said that the observational record is dwarfed by these projections in the future. But the observational record has already had devastating effects. Sea level rise has changed the baseline for land falling hurricanes in New York City. Now, Hurricane Sandy was a devastating event. It had a very unusual track, the, fa the, the fact that it veered to the west to make landfall in northern Jersey and New York City. 
It was very unfortunate that it occurred coinciding with a high tide. But it also was unfortunate that it occurred with a sea level that was higher in 2012 than it had been for 120,000 years. This slide shows the timing of hurricanes against the backdrop of what sea level is doing. In the red, we have the tie gauge. In the boxes, we have geological data. We show the landfalling hurricanes of 2012, Hurricane Donna in 1960, historic hurricanes in 1893 and 1821. What you see from 1821 to 2012, you see a 50 centimetre rise in sea level. 15 centimetres of this is from the land sinking. The rest is climate change. So perhaps sea level rise indicates the true economic cost of climate change. There has been a two feet rise in sea level between the hurricane of 1821 and today. Those hurricanes were of a comparable size in terms of their surge, but not sea levels. Hurricane Sandy cost $65 billion of damage. It plunged lower Manhattan into darkness. It's interesting to note the faint um, blue glow of the New World Trade Center. The New World Trade Center has been built at an elevation of just three feet above sea level. So in the coming decades, we will get more frequent flooding, more intense flooding from tropical cyclones and hurricanes. And this has nothing whatsoever to do with any change in the intensity, in the frequency, in the tracks of our hurricanes. It's all because of sea level rise. The slide you see shows the effects of Hurricane Sandy in 2100 with the intermediate high scenario, which is approximately four feet. So I want to summarize. The US Atlantic coast has 29% of the US population. It has five of the 10 largest cities. It generates 45% of this country's gross domestic product, a mere $6.6 .6 trillion per year. But future sea level is a danger to these populations, economic production, and the infrastructure, all of which rely on a healthy landfall. Now, hopefully, I've given you a flavor of how sea levels have changed in the present and, in, and will change in the future. I highlighted the past. Why? Because the past should, unfortunately, give you the greatest confidence that things will change. I want to leave you with one last fact. From the last glacial maximum 20,000 years ago to today, temperatures have risen by around 5 degrees C. That has melted two-thirds of the ice on our planet, raising sea levels by 120 meters, over 350 feet. We have committed ourselves to a further 5 degrees C rise unless we do something about climate change. How much of the ice do you think that we will melt? We have over 60 meters on our planet. I would say to you that we can afford maybe two to 3% at best. Thank you very much.